has brought us into his banqueting hall, and his banner over us is love. Love is kind. His banner over us is love. Good day, dear viewers. Welcome to Bible Banquet. We're pleased to have you join us, Samuel, Theodore, and Constance, as we speak again on rest in Christ. There are many things that hinder one from resting. Among them, we can note suffering, pain, and even sickness. Sometimes physical illness is merely a symptom of something deeper, a more devastating oppression of guilt, shame, and sin. Today's lesson teaches us that no matter the root cause of sickness and disease, we can be set free to rest. Mm -hmm. Join us as we discuss again on this topic after a word of prayer from Theodore. Shall we pray? Mighty God in heaven, we thank you because you've kept us alive and have gathered us around the table again as we discuss. We invite you to please forgive our sins Amen. and grant us your Holy Spirit. Amen. Give us understanding, give us unction, and as we interpret your word, that nothing else but your will will prevail. Amen. That those who will watch and listen will do so unto life, unto understanding. Mm -hmm. That whatever the circumstances we may face now, we may learn to rest on you. Amen. Bless our crew members and let everything work together for good to your glory and to our blessings. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Welcome again, dear viewers, and thank you always for being out there. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. We'll never get tired of saying thank you over and over again. We are talking about rest, rest in Christ, uh, but this time we're talking about being free to rest. To rest which means that uh, sometimes we can be prevented from resting by one thing or the other. We will begin with a story in the New Testament. We'll be reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter <coughs> 2, verses 1 to 12. Theodore, you'll read the first five verses, and uh, Constance will read verses 6 to 12. Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, reading from the New King James Version. And again he entered Capernaum, after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together, so that there was no room, there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Amen. Amen. Continuing from verse 6. Reading from the New American Standard Bible, but there were some of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak that way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, aware in his spirit that they were reasoning that way within themselves, said to them, Why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, Arise, and take up your pallet and walk. But in order that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, 
take up your pallet and go home. And he arose and immediately took up the pallet and went out in the sight of all, so that they were all amazed and were glorifying God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Amen. 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 That's uh, very typical of Mark, very, very descriptive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in his accounts. Uh, and so we can really imagine the scene, put ourselves in, in, in the shoes of, of these persons in Jesus' time. Um, Jesus is in the house and he's pressed around by so many people, but all of a sudden attention is stolen by um, the presence of four men who uncover a roof and lower this lame man. Uh, what comments can we make about the role these four men played in this story and uh, the fact that Jesus considered the faith of these four men um, in healing this paralytic? Before we even begin to talk about comments about the role they played, uh, I was looking at the qualities of these men, you mm -hmm. know. They were men of faith. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have faith, they would not have done what they did. They were very courageous. Mm. Imagine going to uh, put, pull out someone's roof. I don't think it was their own <laughs> home, you know. They, <laughs> were, they were fearless. They were daring. These mm. were risk takers, in, you know. In fact, they were risk takers. <laughs> in that, in, and then you, you even talk about they were solutionists. Mm. How yes. did this even come to their mind mm. to go through the roof? The mm. roof. Mm. 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 For the sake of this man. For this yeah. And I think they loved him. Because yeah, mm. yeah. if they didn't love him, they would not take that risk. Um, they believed that Jesus could heal the man. That's very important. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they mm -hmm. would not that's have brought important. him at all or taken him to Jesus. These men were undeterred. I, probably they had been thinking of how to help this friend. Knew they couldn't. And so when they heard about Jesus, they said to themselves, it didn't matter where Jesus was, we will must Richie. get, mm -hmm. and whatever it takes, we must get there. So they, nothing could deter them. I, 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 I call them interventors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if they had not come to the rescue of this man, he will remain then there the man would have remained there. there. And mm -hmm. there's a saying that a friend mm -hmm. in need, need is a, a friend, friend indeed. indeed. So these qualities I found in them. And so I would say that they play the role of true friends. Mm. True friends uh, don't always, they don't think about the circumstances. Rather, they think more of the solutions. Solution. The true friends sometimes work as go-betweens. They work as mediators if they can. And um, these friends, these four friends probably knew the root cause of the uh, illness of the paralytic and knew that the only solution would was be Jesus. was Jesus it Christ. It's, it's even mm -hmm. Constance, it's even possible that they must have tried their best in the previous yes, time, trying to see how to help They've him. done everything else. And so else. they were just waiting mm -hmm. for one last solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they took him and they did the consequences of uh, whatever that will result from their action mm -hmm. to save him, including the breaking of the roof. Right. You know? <laughs> Someone's house. <laughs> they, will, they will pay for the roof. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it. God expects us to do this yeah. for our friends. Going the extra mile. Going the extra mile. Mind not giving else. up on them, mm -hmm. doing whatever we can to alleviate their sufferings, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So many lessons there. So many lessons. You know, we, we it, it has to come from people who have forgotten about themselves and their convenience. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't, the extent at which you you can go in helping others is dependent upon how much you're able to forget about your comfort, mm -hmm. forget about your convenience. Sometimes many of us are not able to go that extra mile because we think of the discomfort, what we're going to lose. But I see a people who forgot everything mm -hmm. and it reminds me of the of the Good Samaritan, mm. you know, that man. I was man, thinking about him yeah, too. Yeah, that, that man forgot mm. everything. In fact, he he even forgot his life mm. because that Ruth was notorious. Yes. So what about, what, what if the people who, you know, uh, what I call that, those who injured that man were around? Were around. Okay. It has happened to others yeah, you know, so recently. What if mm -hmm. he was used as a trap? Mm -hmm. He didn't think about that. He just went ahead. So it I think, um, 
um, when the Bible says in Second Corinthians, you know my, my good test, Second Corinthians chapter, chapter five, five. <laughs> you know, um, if any man is in Christ, a new creation, all things have passed away, behold, everything has been made new, and God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, and not imputing their trespasses to them, but has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So our work is to reconcile others to Christ, just as we have been reconciled. And um, when, as we look at the story, you know, in the course of our discussion, we see that the man's problem was not just physical ailment. Mm -hmm. So like Constance said, perhaps they were aware that there is something much more than the paralysis mm -hmm. that needed a divine attention. So our work is to bring people to Jesus for salvation, and it could take any, you know, any, any, form. any form. So let's get into uh, the the situation of this man uh, why does jesus first of all begin by forgiving his sins it, it was obvious that he was lame he he couldn't move by himself but jesus begins from the spiritual aspect why i think jesus is you know all knowing first and secondly he dealt with what was most important hmm. Because, um, you know, uh, somebody, you, you can perform a miracle. Somebody who is blind can see. But if I see, if I'm able to see, and I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm still a sinner. Mm. With my sight, with my whole body, I am still deficient. So Jesus touched him where it was most important. Perhaps it is possible that um, people who go through those kind of situations you know, it must have resulted from one sin or the other, given the is the ancient Eastern, you know, Near Eastern background. But I want to say that Jesus touched him where it was most important, because um, to say let the let the cripple rise up and walk is a simple thing that any other person can do, but only God can forgive sin. And so he did that, he started with that which no other person could do for him, hmm. okay, before he did what any other person could, could do for him. Hmm. And the, the forgiveness of sin has eternal consequences. Hmm. Well, sin is the root of all our illnesses yes, and sicknesses. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that everybody who is sick it's has sin. committed a particular sin, but sin came with sin mm -hmm. uh, sorry sickness, sickness. And troubles came with uh, sin it's also true that sometimes we bring illnesses to ourselves mm -hmm. um whether we sometimes knowing the, what we are doing that is causing not that problem other times not knowing until we are confronted with it and those whose illness are caused by their indulgence to sin no matter how much medication they take no matter how much intervention, until they are confronted or they confront themselves with their, the particular yeah. sin that yeah. is uh, ruining their lives, there will be no healing. Mm -hmm. So even if you give them medication or intervention and they get well, they will get back, they will slump back into that sin. So and, and, uh, and, uh, and even if they don't, not cut you short, Constance, even if they, they receive physical healing, for instance, this man, if he had, Jesus said, rise and walk, and he gets strong again, and his sins were not forgiven, it's not better mm -hmm. in any sense. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I was going to say that Jesus being Lord and knowing what was going on, the struggles mm -hmm. that were going on in the mind and the cause, first of all, like Theodore said, dealt with that. Your sins are forgiven you. And uh, you notice that right after that, he took up his pallet and he left. Oh, he left. The sin was gone. The, mm. the illness was gone because he had been dealing with heart problem or something. So um, spiritual healing is much more important yeah, yeah. than the physical healing. When we are healed spiritually, even when the physical illness persists, we have peace with, with God. God. Yeah, and then and we have rest. Yes, mm -hmm. and we have rest too. And even if we are not healed physically, but we, uh, heal, we spiritually. heal spiritually. We there, is, uh, there is hope. For there us. is hope for us. That rest is there. That peace of mind is there. I was imagining a healthy body that will end up in hell. Mm. You know, then you understand because when Jesus comes, even if we are lame or whatever, and we are spiritually healthy, He will make everything new. Mm -hmm. We'll fly with new bodies mm. anyway. <laughs>
Let's look mm. at um, uh, verses 8 and 9 of this same chapter, Mark chapter 2. There we find the teachers of the law murmuring and accusing Jesus of blasphemy. Instead of being happy for this lame man who had been lame for so long and finally had a chance to walk, what was wrong with the attitude of uh, the religious leaders of Jesus' day? Everything was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything was wrong because um, these people, these people didn't, um, didn't like the blessings that come from God. I, incidentally, the people, the people they live with, were in need several needs. My my attention is drawn to um, the healing at the beautiful gate. You know, the healing of blind Bartimaeus. Mm. You know, Bartimaeus was blind and Jesus was passing. Mm. He heard Jesus was passing and he started screaming. He started screaming. They started shouting Jesus, him son down. of David, you see. know, have mercy on me. And they said, she shut up. It's making noise. But they have seen him around there all the time. They didn't do anything. The man is crying for help and then you are shouting him down. This is not the only time when we see uh, um, Jesus healed a woman on the Sabbath. And they said, there are six days to get healing. Why come on the Sabbath? Well, so isn't it because they, um, they have this idea that every illness is brought about by sin? Yes. And that, so they didn't want it. No, no, that, that's, that's one part. The, 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 I thought that we, are, I can even, we can look at it from, a, from three ways. That is one part. The second part is that there have been so many burdens laid on the Sabbath mm. that they think coming to do that disgraces the Sabbath. Then the third one is their sense of jealousy and animosity toward yeah, Jesus towards Christ. Jesus, Jesus mm. Christ, yeah. such that their preconceived ideas about him, such that even when their own their own person needs help mm. because of their the the the, 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 the person, the person involved. involved, it becomes an offense. Mm. So I think that um, this is the problem they had. Um, this man. Ah, this is blasphemy. How can he ask, say that he has sin is forgiven? Only God can forgive sin. Again, it reveals how much they understood of the person of Jesus Christ. They were, ignora they were mm. ignorant of yeah. who Jesus yeah, was. Their preconceived ideas and their, um, pro uh, what is that? Prejudices the, the prejudices mm -hmm. blinded them, yeah. deft them. That's to the point that even the prophecies that they read and they memorized, they, they could, could not remember. relate yeah. to, to, to that. And I think... That was one of the big issues that they have because the reason why they accused him of blas blasphemy is that they never believed that yeah, he's, yeah, the, that he's the son of God, what more being God himself. We'll take a break here and uh, when we come back, we will talk some more about how we can be free to rest. We'll be right back. Welcome back, dear viewers. We are still on Bible Banquet and we're talking about being free to rest. We just talked about a lame man who was visibly sick but had um, a hidden problem and that was a problem of sin and Jesus attended to him. We now want to look at uh, some other person in the Old Testament, a prophet of God that also struggled with uh, some form of ailment, maybe not physical, uh, but definitely whose rest was affected, so that we can better understand, uh, you know, what different forms of healing uh, are available for us. We will read from First Kings chapter nineteen, verses one to four. And we will also read some supporting passages. We'll read Psalm 34, line 18, Matthew 5, verses 1 to 3, Psalm 73, line 26, and Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 6. I will begin by reading from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 4. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. 
Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow at this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better that my father's mm. poor Elijah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Psalm 34, line 18. Mm. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart mm. and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Amen. 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 And then Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to three and seeing the multitudes he went up on a mountain and when he was seated his disciples came to him then he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven amen amen, amen. psalm 73 line 26 my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'll read again from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 to 6. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. Amen. Amen. And so at the beginning of First Kings 19, we find Elijah in a frantic lone race. It's like he, he, he's, just, he's just running. Um, and uh, what we wonder, what brought him to this lowest point? Shortly after he had won a mighty victory for God, reading uh, chapter 18, uh, he had just... Um, fought, um, you know, stood for the Lord and uh, the prophets of Baal uh, and Asherah had been killed uh, and that was a very mighty victory for God. But here he's running away. What caused him to run away? Well, maybe the power of a woman. I don't know whether that would be fine, but um, Elijah had killed everybody and um, 1 Kings 19 started with Ahab reporting to his wife. Of course, you know, um, Jezebel was um, from the it's a Syrophoenician, mm. it's a Syrophoenician woman who had some very powerful influences, not just over Ahab, but the entire Nation, nation. Mm -hmm. because at that time, Belizim was institutionalized in Israel. So she was in control, and then um, prophets were hired from within and outside Israel to the point where there were, you know, over 400 of them. You can imagine that. So she mm -hmm. was quite in control. You recall um, the story of Naboth. Mm -hmm. and what also happened. So there are instances that show that she had been very, 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 not just powerful, but cruel. So she sent words to the prophet, and all of a sudden, this prophet, maybe I would say he forgot all that the Lord has done in and through him, and all that came to his mind was 
escape. It's time to move. I don't know how much you thought about it. Maybe Constance will explain. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, say that what brought him to his l lowest point, um, you know, sometimes when people go through a mountaintop experience, mm. if care is not taken, they fail and they fall. Sometimes people have you know, done some great things for the Lord. The next time you hear, they've committed one kind of sin or the other. I've, I've heard that in, 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 in lives of some leaders even. So I think that uh, with all that he did, that took physical energy, it took emotional energy, it took everything out of him, and he was exhausted. Mm -hmm. Elijah must have been very, very exhausted. His physical strength might have depleted. Even see, emotionally. Emotional strength mm -hmm. would have been drained. And watching uh, all those prophets Yes, die. that he even not killed them, not just watching them there, but he, the Bible said he killed them. Maybe he didn't kill all, but he killed, killed them. I mean, except you're not, you don't have emotion. It, even, even if you think the cause was right, mm. it will affect you to lay hands on a, you know, someone, and this is not one or two. And I'm saying he's, he's, he was human. He was human. In fact, I was wondering how many days of sleepless nights he went through. Before that before occasion. Yeah, before and that. maybe how many days he of went fast, fast of and fasting and praying yeah. for mm -hmm. God's intervention. Mm -hmm. So there is, you know, it was very possible what happened to him. And um, sometimes that happens. I know that God is able to help us if we focused on him and looked at him. Maybe that was the mistake he made. Because when uh, Jezebel threatened, he took to his heels and forgot that the same God who stood with yeah. him on Mount Carmel could have well. done that. But that showed he was human. Right. And God doesn't even forget that about us. He comes to our rescue. I, I was just thinking that, um, you know, this acronym HALT, mm. I was just looking at HALT and see that, um, you know, HALT, H for hungry, A for angry, L for lonely, and then T for tired. Um, Elijah, was <laughs> Elijah may not have been hungry. Or like, yeah. Well, we don't know. He we're must have fasted. Yeah. So we're having sure. fasted, he was hungry. Again, in the future, we see that he, he was giving food. So he was may have been hungry. Uh, he may not have been angry, per se, but his but anger uh, may also be towards, towards the attitude yeah. of the people. Of the people. Exactly. Towards people angry. So, and he was lonely. Yes, he, he, he felt it, he it, felt lonely because it, he thought he was, was the only, only one. So he was lonely also, mm -hmm. and then he was tired. Okay. So yes. so hot fits into his situation, and you know um, it is said that Satan will tempt you when you are hungry, when you are angry, when you are lonely, or when you are tired. Right. So and and the results of that is depression. Depression. Yeah. yeah. So Needed. so he, he he was he was overtaken, yeah. you know, in a situation, and um, the the only thing he remembered to do was to. Was to run. Thank God he yeah. could run. <laughs> <laughs> so, what symptoms did he manifest that that lead us to say to suggest that he was depressed? Ah, verse four. I read verse <laughs> four again and again. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. Oh. Suicide. Mm. This yeah. is depression. Suicide, Suicide. Yeah. <laughs> thoughts. You know, depression. Mm. Suicide thoughts. Mm. And said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life. Mm. In oh. fact, he was asking God <laughs> to give <laughs> <laughs> him. <laughs> For I am no better than my fathers. Mm. You know, so he, lack of self-worth. Mm. He just lost it. He forgot that he was a prophet mm. by accident. Mm. He forgot that God had used him. So, he got depressed. He also realized maybe when he was running, why should I be running for a woman? And that's also worse than this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he was tired. So very he was tired depression. Tired. Depressed people get tired mm. so easily. I had a friend. She had chronic fatigue. Oh boy. Mm. When that begins, you, couldn't, you can't even lift her leg. Mm. Every part of her will be so heavy. And she will not do anything yeah. for weeks until she comes out of it. So she, he was tired, exhausted, sleep, sleep, sleep. Yeah, Depressed people slept. can sleep yeah. mm -hmm. if you give them opportunity. The fear also sets in, what am I doing in life? Mm -hmm. I need to go. This life is not good. They long for death. They feel they are alone. 
everybody is you know against them or after them. Constance, so. did you notice uh, the Bible says he left his servant? He left his yes. servant somewhere yes. along the way, and, and yeah. then he went. Yeah, I, 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 I wrote something here. I wrote, so, I wrote something here. I said um, he left his servant either as to get information from him, <laughs> or it was a case of an abandonment. <laughs> 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 so either as a strategy, <laughs> okay, you stay here, get <laughs> words from me, or that. In fact, he was running and forgot he, that he, he had his know where he was <laughs> going. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we can be lonely <laughs> even in the in midst of yeah. people. Yes, <laughs> just really. Okay, so um, does this mean, therefore, that a genuine Christian can be depressed? I mean, we, we're seeing a prophet of God here. Certainly, uh, whatever. And it's not seen. Every genuine Christian is a human being. <laughs> <laughs> it's a human being. Circumstances can can get overwhelming, mm -hmm. even as we. We encourage each other to trust in the Lord, mm -hmm. have faith in Him. But we, we can't remove our humanness. Mm -hmm. When Jesus was on earth, the one who we are to follow, at some point, He was tired and He slept. Mm. Even when the storm was raging, He was sleeping. At some point, He was hungry. Yeah. You know, at some point, He wept. Okay, literally. So, Christians go through all kinds of things. Emotion. Jesus, imagine Jesus at Gethsemane. Hmm. Will it, would it, wouldn't that be a manifestation of some kind of depression? If yeah. he had not looked up to God yes. and hung on you know, to God. Father, it, in fact, this, this thing it's is so weighty. You can mm. take it away. Mm. Mm. So that is uh, you know, an element of um, de depression, uh, uh, reactions from one who is depressed. Because the weight comes and the, our humanness sets in. Mm. So that's what I think. It, it is not about whether we have you know, depression tendencies or we even eventually get depressed. What is most important is our ability to look up to God mm. in our moments of, you know, lo lo mm. lowliness mm. or, you know, our, our low, moments low moments and able to come out again. And so you know, there are other things that lead people to depression, mm. you know. Sometimes one is on medication. Mm -hmm. I've heard about that and I've seen that happen in people. And they don't know that one of the side effects of that medication is depression. It has happened. Um, some some people also um, gen um, genetically, yeah. you know, it's it's a predisposition. predisposition. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. the th mm -hmm. those who are melancholic. Mm -hmm. Those who are melancholic sometimes they are suicide prone. Mm -hmm. When you hear that, maybe one to ten persons have taken their lives. If you check it very well, you see that the a higher percentage of them are melancholy because. They are too introspective, mm -hmm. introspective, you know, always brooding over the past, mm -hmm. and that threat comes. Others also get depressed because they are looking at their friends. Mm -hmm. They are looking at uh, others' achievements mm -hmm. where they have not reached. Or they, or they have um, high a goal that they cannot achieve, achieve yeah. and they are beginning to compare, what am I doing here? I'm used and especially when people live in abusive relationship, yeah. you know, you can't have, you can't do anything and they start uh, abusing them, putting them down. Yeah, yeah. It can cause uh, depression. depression. Yes. But it's also possible that some depressions can be caused by an inability to get, um, let's go of a certain sin in our lives that people don't know. Yeah. Mm. You know, you're struggling with that sin. People see you as a very, you know, good Christian. You know, you do everything that needs to, but there is something Constance, you're that, very, that, you're, you're that very, you are dealing with. You are very, <laughs> you're very dealing. right. Very, very <laughs> right. You are very, very mm. right. Because one of my students came to me and he said, Sir, let me tell you, everybody thinks I am super, but I am struggling with so many things. Mm. And I wish you can help me. In fact, one said that I have been struggling with masturbation for 10 years hmm. and of course it doesn't show on the face hmm. so he it doesn't stop him from yeah. doing church that work and he everything so depressed depressed over and over because of that is he wants to get out mm -hmm. but the more he tries to get out he sees he himself wants. falling back again yeah. and then you know that that's cause the right. dep depression mm -hmm. if they look to god and cry but sometimes they feel that they have let their friends down no, yeah. they've let family down they people who are looking down. up mm -hmm. to him pay all he, their mentees and so, and they cannot open their mouth to tell, to tell anybody, anybody except yeah. someone they trust so that the person will not betray them. That can cause depression too. Hmm. 
And uh, when we find ourselves in the heart of depression, what comfort do we find in God's Word? We will talk about that after the break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, dear viewers. We have been talking about Elijah, 
the great prophet of God and he struggled with the depression and uh, we, we stopped at a point where we were asking ourselves the question, what comfort do we find in God's word for one who, like Elijah, may be suffering from depression or any form of sickness? What form of comfort does the Bible offer us? I read Psalm 34, line 18, and it is so comforting and encouraging. Mm -hmm. The Lord is near to those who mm -hmm. have a broken heart mm -hmm. and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. um, brokenness of heart can be, can equal moments of depression, you know, psychological displacements of all kinds. And um, the, the, the word of God says that the Lord is near them. So when people go through those kind of situations, God is with them. Mm. Of course, you remember Psalm 23. The psalmist says, mm. Yeah, walk though I walk through the, the valleys valley of, of the shadows shadow of death, I'll fear no yeah. evil fall. You are with me. And then in the, in, the, in the Beatitudes, we also read in Matthew, Matthew five. chapter 5, verse 3, the blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm. Those who are lowly in heart, those who are remorseful, those who have spiritual poverty, okay, those who recognize their low estate, you know, God is near them mm. to lift them up from that mm. pit. Mm. So the God of the mountain so is the so God, the of, God the of the valley. I read uh, Psalm 73, line 26. God is the strength of our hearts mm. and our portion forever. Sometimes our hearts fail us. Mm -hmm. You know, we are, we, we are disappointed in ourselves. We are embarrassed. We are weak. You know, we can't even raise our heads. Mm. But when we look up to God, he gives us that strength. And he tells us, you are mine all the time. It's our portion forever. And of course, what did Jesus come to do? He didn't just come to lift us up to go to heaven, you know, uh, spiritually. He also came to give us life in abundance. That's in, that includes physical health, emotional health, um, mental, mental health. health, and then spiritual health, which yeah. is the main, even social health. Mm -hmm. He came because even in uh, Elijah's situation, as we are discussing, and he was going with his servant. What did he do with the servant? He left, he left him. him. And he's all alone running. Nobody to talk to, nobody to. Even when the angel gave him food, I think he just took the food and ate and went back to sleep. Yeah. So, but God assures us that even in our lowest moment, he will be there. He's yeah. there for us. Um, as you were speaking, I am having a question that just <laughs> that's just uh, um, there in my mind, um, we're talking about depression. Mm. Um, so what's the role of therapy, um, the role of, of seeking for, for help, um, maybe through a counselor or, or anyone who, who, who is a specialist in mental health? Does, does that fit into uh, the kind of, of solution that God would want us to consider um, if we're dealing with depression? You know, I talked about intervention, mm -hmm. and that's part of it. Mm -hmm. When sometimes some people cannot help themselves. Sometimes this, some of these depressions have gone beyond me coming to visit you and mm -hmm. talk to you. Even when I'm praying, you're not listening and all that. Maybe such a person could be encouraged to go and get help, but get help from the right place. Mm -hmm. Because not every place you go to get help that you get help, sometimes they will worsen your situation or give you bad counsel that would um, make it worse Worsening for you. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing wrong with intervention, but you must be sure of the source of intervention, that the person is also um, basing his intervention practices on the word of word God. Of mm -hmm. yeah, it's important that people unbundle. Sometimes depression could come when people have bundled in so yeah, much. You and they know, are so good they are to talk. Yes. They need to talk to somebody so that they can. And the specialists okay. have a way of getting those who mm -hmm. don't want to yeah, talk even to, to talk. talk. Mm -hmm. First Kings 19 verses 5 to 10, we want to find out uh, what happened to Elijah after this bout of, of depression. We'll also read from First Kings 19 verses 15, 16, and 18, and Second Kings 
chapter 2 verse 11. First Kings chapter 19 verses 5 to 10. Then as he lay and slept on th under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? <laughs> so he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, turned down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am, I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Hmm. Hmm. Verses 15. Continuing from verse 15, First Kings chapter 19. Verse 15 says, And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you have arrived, you shall anoint Hazel king over Aaron. 16. And Jehu the son of Nimshai, you shall anoint king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat of Abel-Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. Verse 18, Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Amen. Uh, amen. And the next one I'm going to read is Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. Then it came about as they were going along and talking, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. Mm. Amen. Amen. So how does God intervene in Elijah's situation? What, what steps does God undertake to give Elijah rest? Mm. He first of all fed him. To confirm that the man was God, hungry. God is wonderful. <laughs> he fed him. Yeah. He sent an angel to take food to him. And a jar of water. Mm. Not just the cake, you know. That's very... I don't know how to that explain it. He touched yeah. me, you know, <laughs> you know. And then he allowed him more rest. Mm -hmm. And he fed him again. Mm -hmm. And then he asked him what he was doing. Sometimes when people are depressed, you need to wake them up. Mm -hmm. What are you, what's your problem? What are you doing here? He was asked getting him, him to unburden. Yeah, trying to get him to start unburdening and uh, talking. What are you doing here, Elijah? I'm sure that that one, you know, got up and wondered. And then he gave him an assi some assignments. Mm -hmm. When people are depressed, you don't let them just continue to lie there. And to you be idle. Not to be idle. You need to keep them busy. And God is great. So he gave him, he didn't even ask him to anoint one person, he anoint <laughs> three people. And um, do you, we, our reading also showed that God knew it was time for Elijah to get rest. Mm -hmm. He replaced him. Mm -hmm. He, he asked, asked him to anoint um, Elisha. Elisha that will take his place and from our reading we saw that the chariot of fire you know eventually took him away and Elisha was left to continue with the work mm. so um, um. God also realizes when it is enough mm. we can't do anymore and he just says come and yeah and now you're free to rest mm. just get your rest wow. well I would say that um, God's grace is too big for us mm. to comprehend. Mm. Mm. Too much. Too big for us to comprehend. Too much. Um, the, 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 the beginning of chapter 19, 
in fact, if we contrast chapter 17, 18, and then bring 19, and then the last part that Constance read, you see that God uses us despite our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. God loves us. And, in um, spite of ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. in spite of ourselves. And then um, the weaknesses that manifest at some point, if they are not our way of life, God ignores he will them. intervene. Yeah, God and ignores them mm. and still continues to, to use, use us. Yeah, mm. because I'm, I, I'm not sure I have seen anybody under the sun who does not have a weakness, who does not mm. have one area where the person, you know, it's needs probably. help from God. But if that is not a way of life, God will always make up. And I see him systematically dealing with, you know, with Elijah. Mm -hmm. He ran and then got tired. I'm sure he, he was running and he got tired of running. And so he... He was... <laughs> he would have fallen. <laughs> <laughs> and then he lay down and mm -hmm. slept. He was not... In, did you realize God didn't condemn him? No. God didn't say, you have not finished the work I asked him. Why would no, you no, no, take no. your feet? Just no, but, 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 but Constance, mm -hmm. the other part of it is that his earthly ministry finished. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we see that mm -hmm. by his running away, Elijah didn't finish the work of reformation. No, mm. he didn't. He left a gap. Mm -hmm. And perhaps God said, I think I need somebody else to finish what you've started. Um, he was I, too emotionally exhausted. Yes, exhausted. So I, 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 I don't he know. Was tired. You, know <laughs> you know, he had dealt with the this situation for many, for a many long years. Time, Even three and a half years. No rain, you mm -hmm. know. And with Jezebel and Ahab on all their threats, yeah. he was just to isn't to that a lesson a, a lesson even for for church leaders or, or not just church leaders but all of us who sometimes have the work of god to carry to carry on sometimes uh, uh, we, we we just think we we, we will finish it or, or yeah. we can finish no we, we know of one pastor that um, and we he, don't even take the time his, to rest his slogan is that uh, we'll finish the work <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think i think it's important that we think we learn that, that. Mm -hmm. God is in control. Mm. When he takes me off from a stage, I should be humble. Mm. You know, it, there are a lot of sides to this discussion. Mm. He runs away and goes sleeping. God said, get up and eat. I don't know what quantity he ate. I don't know the, the angel time. even <laughs> told him that he has a long no, no, journey that, that, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to that. I don't know how many hours between the first time he was called to eat and the second one. Well, maybe right. that was lunch and then the <laughs> supper or that he didn't eat enough food at the time he ate that he was called to come and eat again. This time he said, you know what did I mention? Eat because the journey is it's long. Small. And then he ate the food that will take him for 40, 40, days, 40 days and 40, and 40 nights. nights. No, no sleep. No sleep and, and, again. And now, God followed him through the 40 days. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he wanted him to go, but Elijah ended in a cave. Mm -hmm. yes. And God said, what, what, are, you, what are, you are you doing in a cave? Here? Perhaps the food was not given to him to go and relax in a cave. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So none of us is able to understand exactly the, the, how God wants to work with us. We may be making decisions think, thinking we are right, but God has a better direction. So it, it means we all need to be humble mm -hmm. as we serve God. And finally, but do you know? Okay, so ahead, your no, final, say your final. I want to say something. Do you know something? You said something about God um, looks away from our little incidences, yeah. you know, if that is not our normal way of life. God is not like our present leaders, mm -hmm. whether they are leaders in the government or in the church or whatever. You know, you would have worked and worked and worked for many years, you've done great things, everybody knows. At the moment when you do, you have a sleep, a sleep. Every, That's every, every good thing you have done is forgotten. forgotten. You are either sent away or you're condemned or you're stripped off whatever you... you, you or you're shut down uh, Yeah, shut down completely. And all your years of service, all, your, all the good things you have done, nobody remembers. In one moment, people sit around and determine your life and your future. Mm -hmm. I think that leaders, whether in the church, in the government, wherever need to sit and think about this very, very that, that people will work mm -hmm. and at the end of the day instead of commendation because of a little sleep we are all humans they are and, yeah. and, know, and even as we even as we even uh, it just hits me yeah, right mm. now even mm. even as we sit to adjudicate those of it just that jesus said 
let the person who has not sinned cast the first, the first stone. stone. Nobody was able but to God do that. But God just said, get Nobody up and eat. Continue your journey. And uh, My, my mm. consolation, if you ask me, is, is um, that Elijah made it to heaven mm. in spite of all of that. And then he, uh, I'm talking as a minister now. And that now. he's there now, right? Yeah, not, I'm, talking not, as a, not. I'm talking as a minister now. You know, God calls him. He didn't tell him his ministry on earth has finished. Mm. But he said, okay, what yeah, are you doing here? Come, anoint this person, anoint this person, anoint this person. When you anoint the one who will take over from you, mm -hmm. it means that you are finished. Yeah. Mm. So, will I have done that happily? But, but you, did you see, even as I started talking about it, did you see the way he was taken? Yeah. Chariots of fire. Because so what does that, you know? We, we, which suggests that he oh. was not, he didn't bear grudges. No. Wow. He, he, he didn't get offended that, oh, I had so much more yes. to do. That why are you taking mm -hmm. me off the scene? So the, I, I the, think the, we should the have way he left was something much more glorious. The, yes. That's what I said. The way he left was much more glorious yes. than than the work he would have continued yes. to So do. I think that each of us, as ah. we get whatever little office or the other, should understand that, look, God has something better and bigger mm -hmm. than where we are. And even the office we are holding now, God gave. Mm -hmm. And even when we are mistreated, we shouldn't allow grudge yeah, to, to rob us uh, of what God has planned for us because he's the only one who can reward us exactly with the reward that we are looking I'm for. So, I'm so you happy know? Elijah got ah, rest. You know? Super rest. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's where we end this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> There's surely so much to talk about, but we are done. Yeah. <laughs> and the good news is that Elijah was free to rest at last. Yeah. And all of us can also have that same experience mm -hmm. if we depend on God in spite of our flaws, mm -hmm. if we allow him to take over our lives. And our prayer is that we will indeed experience that full rest that Elijah uh, experienced in one way or the other. We'll ask Constance to pray for us at this moment. And please stay tuned for our next edition of this program. Father, we thank you for teaching us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that has been active in, our, in this discussion. And we want to believe that our listeners and viewers will also experience the joy and the encouragement that we feel mm -hmm. even as we discuss this. Mm -hmm. Thank you for our crew members and I know that they, are, they have also been blessed. And thank you that you have not disappointed us with failure of any of our equipment mm -hmm. or lights or anything. Thank you for your presence during this moment. We pray that you continue to bless us and help us that even in a moment of uh, loneliness, we will remember that you are close to the brokenhearted. Amen. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.